All tissues heal by similar mechanisms. Wound healing is a complex process of overlapping phases that is initiated by an injury or wound. Normal wound healing is divided into phases defined by characteristic cellular populations and biochemical activities. These phases include hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling. Let us focus on the first phase of wound healing, which is hemostasis. Immediately after injury, disruption of blood vessels leads to hemostasis. The key players in this stage are platelets and clotting factors, which normally circulate in the blood. Hemostasis involves vasospasm, vessel constriction, platelet plug formation, and activation of the coagulation system. The final product of all of this is a fibrin mesh. In addition to achieving hemostasis, the fibrin mesh serves as scaffolding for the migration into the wound of inflammatory cells, such as polymorphic leukocytes, which are your neutrophils, and monocytes, or macrophages. Platelets release a number of substances which help initiate wound repair, such as platelet-derived growth factor, transforming growth factor beta, platelet activating factor, and fibronectin. Platelets also releases serotonin, facilitating cell migration by increasing vascular permeability. In addition, injured endothelial and tissue immune cells release prostaglandins and cytokines, which promote the inflammatory response. The inflammatory response being an increase in adhesion molecules to allow infiltration of inflammatory cells, cytokines to attract the inflammatory cells, and also it causes vasodilation and increases vascular permeability to facilitate the transport of the inflammatory cells. And this all will lead to our second phase of wound healing, which is inflammation. In inflammation, the key players are the neutrophils and the macrophages. Neutrophils are the first inflammatory cells that infiltrate the wound site, peaking at 24 to 48 hours. The primary role of neutrophils is phagocytosis, which is eating of things such as the bacteria and tissue debris. Macrophages is the most important regulatory cell in the wound healing inflammatory phase. Typically, they appear in the wound site 72 hours after the injury. Macrophages are very important in wound healing as they play many roles, including phagocytosis of bacteria and tissue debris, recruitment and activation of fibroblasts, endothelial cells, and more inflammatory cells, angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels, and lastly, as we will soon find out, promoting the extracellular matrix synthesis, which is important to create new tissue, basically. This leads to our third phase of wound healing, which is proliferation. During the proliferative phase, a new vascular bed is formed to provide oxygenated blood to the wound, and the wound fills then with granular tissue. The key players here are the cells that have been recruited and have proliferated thanks to the cytokines released by the macrophages during the inflammatory phase. These cells include fibroblasts, endothelial cells, and in skin injury, keratinocytes. The proliferative phase can be subdivided into three major processes, angiogenesis, granulation, and re-epithelialization. In angiogenesis, the endothelial cells proliferate extensively, forming new blood vessels. And this process is promoted by cytokines and growth factors such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, transforming growth factor beta, and vascular endothelial growth factor. Angiogenesis is essential to successful wound healing. In granulation, which is the second step, growth factors such as platelet-derived growth factor and transforming growth factor beta attract fibroblasts to the wound. And fibroblasts are the cells which produce the granulation tissue. Fibroblasts proliferate and form this matrix consisting of adhesive proteins, proteoglycans, and glycosaminoglycan gel 
as well as fibrous proteins such as collagen and elastin. And these components are essential for new matrix formation and tissue repair, granulation tissue. The third is re-epithelialization. After the provisional matrix has been formed, the surrounding keratinocytes will facilitate re-epithelialization by proliferating and migrating across the damaged area to re-establish barrier function. The final phase of wound healing is the maturation or remodeling. The primary purpose of the remodeling phase is the formation of new epithelium and scar tissue, and this process can take up to a year to complete. The main players here are the fibroblasts and their evolution called the myofibroblasts. Firstly, remodeling involves a balance of matrix accumulation as well as later dampening the matrix formation and actually causing matrix to break down. Essentially, during the remodeling process, fibroblasts will alter the extracellular matrix that is produced they will transform to myofibroblasts, and then they will undergo apoptosis, or cell death. Myofibroblasts are quite amazing. They are capable of contracting, as they contain actin filaments. The contraction of the myofibroblasts and the alteration in the matrix material produces the scar tissue. Scar remodeling will continue for many months, 6 to 12 months after the injury. Gradually, the cells in the scar will undergo apoptosis, resulting in a mature, avascular, and acellular scar. And so that completes wound healing and the four phases. But it's important to know that there are so many factors that can lead to impaired healing. And these factors can be divided into local factors or systemic factors. Local factors include the wound type, the wound size and location. If there's a pressure on the wound, if there's edema or dehydration, the blood supply to the wound, if there's an underlying infection or foreign material. Systemic factors include increasing age, certain medications such as the use of steroids or antibiotics, comorbidities including diabetes, heart failure and obesity, as well as nutritional deficiencies, specifically vitamin C. Now, focusing on skin wounds or cutaneous wounds specifically, there are two main types of healing. There's primary intention or secondary intention. Primary intention is where the edges are sutured or stapled close, and the wound heals quickly with minimal tissue loss. This typically occurs during surgery. Healing by secondary intention occurs when the sides of the wound are not opposed. Therefore, healing must occur from the bottom of the wound upwards. In healing by secondary intention, the wound heals through a process that includes granulation tissue formation and re-epithelialization specifically. Secondary intention wound healing is commonly done after an excessive loss of soft tissue, such as major trauma or severe burns. Myofibroblasts play a major role in this type of wound healing. So in summary, wound healing involves four phases, hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling. We discuss factors that could impair wound healing, local factors and systemic factors.